Hey everybody, it's uh, Julie again from Fundamentals Physiotherapy and Wellness Clinic. Uh, welcome to our Sunday night Facebook Live on um, basically working at home, which I know a majority of us are doing currently. Um, and I know there's a couple of people who are heading into their their work. So this is also applicable to you if you've never really had um, an er ergonomic assessment or if you've ever never had anybody kind of take a look at the setup uh, with you at work. So um, the layout for tonight, this should be a little bit of a shorter workshop. Um, just we're going to be covering basically what to look for when you are working. Um, whether it be from home or at the office. Uh, and then we'll be kind of talking about the types of things that you can do um, to kind of alter and improve um, your posture, your sitting environment, um, and some little quick tips that you can do at home. And then we'll be talking about some different types of accessories that you can get if your workstation isn't quite as ergonomic as it could be. Um, so it'll be a good little educational session for you guys. Um, and then as well, we will be talking about just some stretches that you can do while you're working, um, that are easy to do at your desk, um, without getting up. If you, if you're starting to feel stiff, um, or if you're starting to kind of have neck pain, shoulder pain, mid back pain or low back pain, which we all tend to experience when we've been sitting for too long. So um, if anybody does have any kind of history of um, neck pain, low back pain, uh, shoulder pain when they are sitting, make sure that you do comment um, or kind of hit the, the like button just so I know um, what we need to address and if there's a, a quite a few people that are having issues. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments. Um, and then that way I'll, I'll be able to answer them throughout the... Uh, the 15 minute, 20 minute session. Um, so the first thing to talk about is, is posture when we're sit, when we're basically working. Um, you'll kind of hear a lot of um, having to do with like sitting versus standing. Um, and a lot of uh, businesses have started going into the sit to stand desks, um, which are amazing. Um, only because it's giving our bodies the opportunity to change position. Um, one thing that I educate my patients on quite a bit is that sitting isn't horrible for us. I think we have this kind of notion that that sitting in itself is bad. It's not always the fact that sitting is bad for us. It's the fact that we sit too long for too long of a period. Um, you know, if you're, if you're at work and you're sitting for six or eight hours and you only get up once. Um, you know, to go to the washroom. It's, it's not the sitting that has bothered you. It's more likely the fact that you have sat for six to eight hours and not moved. Our bodies are meant to move. Um, our bodies are meant to twist. They're, they're meant to bend to the side. They're meant to bend forward, bend backwards. And the problem with today's society is that we don't move enough. Um, so I really try and encourage a lot of my patients to kind of alternate between sitting, standing if they have that opportunity, um, and, and just being aware of their natural posture. Um, so what I kind of wanted to show you guys today, um, is basically how not to sit or take a look at somebody who's sitting not quite, um, as well as they could be. So if they did have to sit for a long period of time, basically, you know, what could we alter? Um, so I have my husband here. Mike, he, now he works from home and he works from our home office. Um, our office was kind of custom built. So it's, we had to adapt to the desk um, instead of uh, basically, you know, the desk adapting to us. So I'm gonna show you him sitting in our chair that we used to have. Um, and I'm gonna kind of point out a couple of things why that chair and his setup um, how many years ago did we move here? Three years ago. Um, why it was causing him some issues when he was at work. Um, and he works for Sun Life. So he's, he's sitting all, all day long, um, except when he now knows to get up and move around. 
Um, and he's on the phone uh, nonstop for eight hours. So I'm gonna kind of turn the camera around to him and I'm gonna show you guys little things that I notice with him sitting um, so that when you go to sit at your desk, you know what to look for, okay? So we're gonna say hi to Mike tonight. Hi everybody. <laughs> He so doesn't know how to act right now. So that's totally okay. So Mike, can you show us how you were would usually sit at your desk? So I usually sit like this at my desk. So when we moved here um, three years ago, this was the chair that he was sitting in. Now, if you take a look at him from the side, what you're gonna notice is A, his armrests are not effective at all. So he has no support on his elbows. And if you kind of look, he's nowhere near the back of the chair. So he currently has like no lumbar support. Now, what you're also gonna look at is the fact that his shoulder and this humerus, this bone right here, is not, um, is not directly downwards. So really his elbows should be not, not quite a hundred percent, but pretty in line with his shoulder. So he's got this flexion going on in his, um, in his upper arm. And then what you're going to see here is that his arm forearm is actually going upwards, right? So what he's going to end up using a lot is these extensor muscles and his bicep is turned on pretty much all day by being in this position. So he's really prone to a shoulder problems because the shoulder's too far forward. So he's going to end up with some shoulder problems, probably some neck issues because his upper traps are being elongated instead of him being back like this. So because that upper trap is being elongated, he's going to end up with neck issues, especially on that left side. He's going to end up with some bicep issues and he's going to end up probably most likely with a tennis elbow, <laughs> AKA a lateral epicondylitis. Now, if we look at him from head height, you're going to notice that his, <laughs> his eyes are about mid screen, maybe a little bit higher. And that's a little bit off as well. When he closes his eyes, Mike, open your eyes and tell me what part of the screen are you looking at? When I open my eyes, I'm looking at like the middle third of the screen. Okay, so you're looking somewhere around here. Yeah. Okay, his eyesight should actually be at the URL address. So he's a little bit low as well. Now, can you put your feet flat on the floor, Mike? So his feet do touch the ground, which is great. Your hips should be at 90 degrees, which basically means like the corner of a box or maybe up to 100, 110 degrees. So he's not too, too bad there, but the elbow, the elbow should also be at 90 to 100 degrees. And you can see that it's actually about 80 degrees. Okay, so elbow and hip should be anywhere between 90 and 110 degrees. So basically the corner of a box or a little bit wider. Okay, so he's pretty prone to some injuries there. So we're going to swap out to his new chair. Now, because this was kind of a custom desk, we ended up finding that none of your regular chairs were tall enough. Um, so we actually ended up going with a architectural chair, um, which allows your desk height, your chair height to go a little bit higher than average because usually architects work at a <laughs> architectural table. <laughs> okay. So what you're going to notice because they are high, they offer the foot rest on the bottom because A, if he didn't have his feet on the foot rest, Mike, can you, yeah, his feet would be hanging. So if your feet don't touch the floor, you always need to remember that you have a stool. You need to have your feet on a stool so that they're supported. Now you can see that his chair here has the armrest. That's adjustable. So we can kind of modify that, put it lower, higher if we need to. And now you can see here in this chair, his bum is actually at the back of the chair. So he's got a little bit more lumbar support. Now I always bug him because he doesn't go close enough to the desk as he should be. So Mike, I'm gonna get you to scoot a little bit closer to the desk. Yeah, there you go. 
So now you're gonna see, see how his elbow is a little bit more in line with his shoulder, right? So this is no longer here. So his upper traps are no longer elongated. They're in their normal position. So he's less likely to have neck issues now. And because the elbow is, is more directly underneath the shoulder, he's less likely to have um, rotator cuff, bicep, supraspinatus trouble right there. Now you can see here, he went from his 80 degree angle before to his 90, almost maybe 100 degree angle here. So this means that he's less likely to irritate these tendons in through the elbow, okay? Now when he's on his keyboard, you're gonna see that his wrist is in a neutral position. If you're too high, and let's say your keyboard's up higher or your desk is too high and your wrist is in an extended position, that means that you're overusing these muscles all day long. And that's when you're gonna to start to get a lot of tenderness in through these extensors and on the bone where they attach, okay? Now, if we look at his height, Mike, can you close your eyes? Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you that this is gonna be incorrect because he his monitors up higher. So, Mike, can you open your eyes? And what part of the screen are you looking at? I see just at the top of the monitor. Okay, so he's looking more up here. So his monitor should actually be propped up on a book or two um, so that when he closes his eyes and he opens them, he's looking at the URL or the address bar. Okay, now you should be able to, Mike, can you reach forward? You should be almost within arm's reach of your monitor as well. So most of the time it should be anywhere from usually 20 inches away up to 30. Now, if you are too far away, can you scoot yourself back? What happens over time is you tend to start reaching for the screen. So we kind of call it a turtleneck um, just because your head is trying to get closer and your eyes are trying to get closer to the screen because you're too far away. And what's gonna happen here is you can see this increased extension of his head. So he's gonna end up with some upper C-spine issues and usually that'll kind of cause like a kink in the neck or you may even get some referral pattern of um, or radicular pain into the arm if he starts getting any pinched nerves down in through here. Okay, so the closer that he is, his chin's gonna end up coming back closer. So you can see the alignment of his neck is better than far away. Go far, go away again, Mike. And then you can start to see that turtleneck happen again. And that's when you tend to get that kink in the neck. Good. And then come back. So key things to look for. Let's recap for you guys at home. Feet need to be on the floor or on a stool, or if you have an architectural chair, you're going to have them on the ring. Hip and elbow both need to be about 90 degrees to 110 to minimize the strain on those areas. Make sure that your bum is all the way back in the chair. Now, one thing I am going to point out to Mike, Mike, are you sitting on your bum or are you sitting on your bum bones? On my bum. Okay, I want you to think about sitting on your bum bones. So think about the fact that you had a tail and you don't want to sit on your tail. You're gonna, you're gonna, no, other way. Yes, there you go. Now you're on your bum bones. So what you really need to remember is make sure you sit on your bum bones. <laughs> That's what they're there for, okay? Making sure that the wrist is in a neutral position. It should usually be neutral or slightly lower. You wanna make sure that you are not in an extended position. Shoulder and elbow should be pretty much in line with another. You might have a little bit of maybe 10 degrees, 20 degrees max. Making sure that the shoulders are back, heads in a neutral position. And when you close your eyes, you need to make sure that you're looking at the address bar. Any questions, Mike? Sounds good to me. <laughs>
What do you need to change now? <laughs> I need to sit better in my chair. You can sit on your bum bones. Closer to my desk, and I guess I need to grab one of my economics books from the university and prop them up underneath my two monitors. You got it. Okay, thank you for you being my me. little test subjects. So that's basically an ergonomic assessment, which we can do virtually. Um, we've done two this week thus far, um, taking a look at people's workstations, um, what needs to be modified, um, and making the adjustments accordingly. Now, sometimes people's um, workstations aren't modifiable. Like sometimes we have to modify them. Um, so there's a couple of different accessories that you can get um for your workstation uh, so i want to kind of briefly touch on those um if you can't seem to get the right height of your desk um there's always the the opportunity of getting one of the pull out keyboards um so that you're not kind of propped up and you don't have that extra bend so if you can get the the, the keyboards that tuck under the desk then you can easily pull it out um if you are on the phone a lot, make sure you have a headset. I don't want, I don't like when people are in sustained side flexion on the phone, especially if they're an admin um, or they're taking calls or, or they're at a bank or that sort of thing. So make sure that you have a headrest. They're a great, great investment. Um, if you're typing off of a document, make sure that you doc have a document holder. Um, mouse pad. So we were talking about the position of the wrist. Um, so when you are mousing, see if you can see this, if you are in a overextended position, so if you're like this, that means that there's a lot of strain on that elbow that we were talking about. So sometimes you can get the pads for the mouses, which will give a little bit of support here so that you can see that you're actually in a neutral position instead of an extended wrist position. Being an extended wrist position for too long will cause some irritation to those tendons. Um, now, a lot of people, if you do suffer from a uh, tennis elbow or a lateral epicondylitis, it just basically means tendonitis of these muscles, they have actually come out with a ergonomic uh, vertical mouse. So instead of being in this position, you're actually in this position. So it's minimizing the strain to the extensor tendons. Um, and I'll show you there. So you can see that the alignment is like this instead of like this. And they're pretty affordable too. Um, vertical mouses are a great accessory to have and wonderful for the forearm. Um, now there's also um, sit to stand desks. So if you guys are stuck at home, um, the sit to stand desks are great um, because it gives you the opportunity to get out of the sitting posture. So some of them are kind of um, like pressure pneumatic um, and some of them are automatic where you just press the button and they, they elevate and they decline. So you can go from sitting to standing. Um, they have the extra height for the monitor and then they have the one for your keyboard and it sits literally on top of your desk. Um, so these are great, great investments. And you can see like some of the prices, depending, they are actually extremely affordable. Um, and if it means your health, they are definitely, definitely worth the investment. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of them are pretty expensive, but some of them are, um, are pretty reasonable if you are working eight hours a day, five days a week for your entire life. So that is basically, um, some options and accessories that you can get that can help you to be a bit more comfortable. Um, and I know a couple of people had mentioned like, what do I do when I'm working? Um, you know, is there stretches that I can do to help? Uh, and there definitely is tons of stretches that we can do. We just need to keep them nice and easy, nice and simple so that you can do them throughout the day. And, um, and then just being able to incorporate them so you guys know how to do them properly um, and making sure that they shouldn't be painful and you should feel good after them, especially if you're getting out of that kind of sitting, kind of slouch posture. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through a couple of different stretches that you guys can do. Um, now always remember, if anything's stiff, 
tender, just take it easy. If it's painful, um, then it's something that you probably don't want to do. And you want to check in with somebody um, like a healthcare professional, whether it be a chiro, um, your doctor, your physio, and say, you know, what stretches should I be doing at, at my desk? Because um, everybody's very different. So what works for one person may not work for another person. So as an example, out of, out of everybody that's watching right now, um, how many of you guys sit at a desk a majority of the day? If you do, can you just hit like the heart button? Because I want to see how many people sit all day. I'm looking at a couple of your names and one, two, three, four, five, yeah, so there is quite a few of you guys that do sit all day. A um, couple of mid back stretches, some forearm stretches, and, and you guys can kind of play around with, with what works for you, but this is usually what I'll show my patients, okay? So let's see where we're gonna put you. So one of the first stretches that I usually show people, and you guys remember when we were showing Mike, um, he, if you're too far away, you tend to get into that like turtleneck position. Um, so one of the first stretches that I get advise people to do is just what we call a cervical retraction. It's basically where you just look straight ahead. And because we're always in this posture, what you're trying to do is instead of all your vertebrae being stacked on top of one another, but, but kind of sheared forward, we just tuck the chin back and then release. So the key is making sure you keep your eyes straight forward and we just do five of them. And what that's doing is it's just improving the alignment of your neck because you're usually in this protracted position that we're trying to get you back into a retracted position so that your ear tragus is more in line with your shoulder. Um, mid back stretch. Um, what I'll usually advise people, especially if you do have arm rests, is to use the armrest and just do a little thoracic rotation. And I usually say do anywhere between three and five reps in both directions. Because we're in this flexion posture when we're sitting, we want to encourage our mid back to rotate because it's supposed to rotate. For eight hours, if you stay like this, it's, of course it's going to be stiff when you sit up, of course. Um, I wouldn't expect it not to be. Now, if you move while you're sitting and you get up when you're sitting, you're going to be less stiff by the end of eight hours. Now, we also talk about the fact that you're typing all day. So your shoulders are inwardly rotated and adducted, so inward. So what I usually encourage people to do is just kind of do a chest opener. So all you're doing is taking your palms, pointing them in front of you and trying to kind of retract your shoulders, squeeze your shoulder blades together and then come forward again. Same thing, five reps. What that's doing is it's opening up all these pec muscles that attach to your sternum and allowing everything to open up because you've sat like this for so long. Okay. And we talked about your wrists. Because you're using, usually, when you sit at a desk, a majority of the time you're typing. Anybody here sit at a desk and not type? The answer is probably going to be no, right? Is anybody going to say no? No, I didn't think so. <laughs> okay, so wrist stretches are really great. Um, and we have two, two major muscles um, in our form. We do have other ones, obviously. Um, but you can basically do a wrist extensor stretch, making sure that the elbow stays down and then you're just stretching like this, nice and gentle through the back surface of the hand, not the fingers, and it shouldn't be painful. Good, and then you're gonna switch sides. Now you also have your forearm flexors. Even though they're not used as often, you're still using them, especially when you're typing and mousing. So you can actually go palms up this time and stretch this way. Same thing, key to remember is keep your shoulder down. We tend to do this when we stretch, 
you want to keep that shoulder in a neutral position. Same thing here, grabbing onto the palm and gently pulling back, not pulling at the fingers because you don't want to pull at the finger joint. You're trying to have that effect on the wrist. Good. One last stretch that I love, and I always encourage people to do it, is because we stay in that flexed posture all day, that's flexion, right? Flexion is... um. It's, it's not bad for you, but when you're sitting, if you are slouched or let's say sitting with one leg underneath you, it does increase the amount of pressure in your discs. Um, and studies have shown that, that a more upright posture reduces the strain and the pressure through your discs. So if I slouch, more pressure is going through. If I sit up tall, there's still pressure going through. Don't be wrong. We have my body weight and gravity and all those factors, um, but it's less. So if you're sitting for eight hours a day, six hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, you want to actually encourage going in the opposite motion as long as it's not, as long as it's not painful. So we have two, two areas that we need to encourage going backwards. We need to go backwards in our low back and our mid back. So sometimes if you just need a break, I suggest to patients just hands on their back, right around their tailbone area. And all you're gonna do is just a gentle arch backwards to combat that flexion. So you're just gonna extend. Three, four, five reps. Mid back stretch, one of my favorites. Hands clasped together, which you can do in standing at your desk or you can stay sitting in your chair. And all you're gonna do, this should not create any pain in your shoulders. If it does, same thing. You wanna kind of um, address it with your, with your physio or with your healthcare provider. Is you're going to put your elbows on your table, clasp your hands, and you're just gonna bring your chest down towards the floor, tuck your chin in to protect your neck. You're gonna feel a really good stretch right around your mid back area. And that's your thoracic extension. Two, three reps and you're good. So what you have to remember is when you are sitting for a long time, take into account that it's not always the sitting that bothers you. People always worry, like I said earlier, it's, it's not the sitting that bothers you. It's the prolonged, sustained sitting posture. Our bodies are not meant to sit for long periods of time. Our bodies aren't meant to stay in any position for too long. And I'll give you a couple of examples. If you're in the hospital and you're on bed rest, right? We're not sitting, right? We're usually laying down. After seven days of laying down, how do you feel when you get up? Stiff, horrible, right? If you are gardening, and you're kneeling down or you're crouching, you're doing you know, four, five, six hours of gardening. How do you feel after? After being in that position for too long? Horrible, right? And okay, if I told you that we're gonna watch a movie, you're gonna, and you were gonna lay down on the floor on your elbows and watch the movie like this. How would your neck feel afterwards? Good or horrible? <laughs> Any position for a sustained period of time is what usually aggravates our tissues, our joints, our ligaments. If you stand in one spot for five, six hours straight, how do you think you're gonna feel? I'd like to see you guys answer this. In the comment section, if I told you to stand for eight hours, how do you think you would feel? I really wanna see what people would say. If I told you to stand still, eight hours, you couldn't move at all. How are you going to feel? Good? Bad? Stiff? Loose? No. You're going to feel really stiff, just as if you were sitting and tired. Yes, John, tired. And very sore, Diana. Yeah, 100%. So like I said, don't be afraid to sit. Don't be afraid to bend as long as you do it properly. Don't be afraid to stay in a position as long as you get out of it. 
usually what I recommend patients, if you are sitting and you do have a sitting job, you either want to have the opportunity to sit to stand, so using a sit to stand desk, or you get up every 30 minutes. And people say, well, I can't, I have so much work to do. What do I do? I can't get up. I can't walk around. It doesn't have to be for very long. You just have to get out of that position so that the ligaments that were stretched, the discs that were compressed, the muscles that were a little tired and fatigued have the opportunity to breathe again. So every 30 minutes, stand up and do a little back stretch. 30 minutes later, stand up and do a little rotational stretch. All you have to do is get out of that position for 20, 30 seconds and then go back to work, right? Have your lunch. Don't be afraid to move. There's not, there's no excuse not to move. Your work will get done. Your health matters. So as I always say, invest in your health because that's all that matters. We need to remember to treat our bodies well. Take the opportunity, stretch when you can, move when you can, change your positions and don't stay still. Anybody have any questions about your ergonomic setup, um, how you can adjust things, um, some of the accessories that I talked about, if your workstation isn't modifiable, how you can modify it, or anybody have any questions about the stretches that we went over? I can't sit still. My leg's shaking. <laughs> okay, so if anybody has any questions about anything that I went over, um, feel free to message us um, or you can give us a call to talk one-on-one -on -one with one of our therapists. Um, you can easily reach us at 905-576-5065. Um, you can also reach us via email at admin at fundamentalsphysio.ca um, or if you're still unsure about your work setup, feel free to um, give us a call. We do provide ergonomic assessments, um, even virtually, to give you some advice and some modifications on, um, on your work setup. And because we are physios, they are um, billable under your extended health, in, uh, extended health providers. Um, and just remember, virtual visits ha are amazing. Um, it gives you the opportunity to, or for us, to kind of see how you move, see how you move in your home, see how you move um, at work or how you don't move at work. And all the virtual visits, about 99% of the healthcare providers are covering the virtual visits. So if you have any questions, need advice, feel free to um, workshop tomorrow night on your neck. So just kind of learning a little bit about what is, what makes up your neck how your neck moves um, and what sort of things uh, can you experience with your neck. My goal with these uh, workshops is not only to teach you, you know, you know, what can you do? I want to educate you on how your body moves because I can show you exercises until the sun goes down. But if you don't understand why you have symptoms, how your body moves, how your neck moves, how your back moves, how your hip moves, how your pelvic floor functions, how your breathing functions, you're not going to know why. And as a physio, I have so many tools in my little tool chest that I want to share them with you. So um, follow us on Instagram at fun underscore physio. Um, continue to follow us on Facebook. And if you do have any workshops that you would like me to do, feel free to reach out. Um, now one last recap. I have some exciting news, uh, this Saturday at 8 AM. Yes. In your pajamas and with a coffee in hand, um, we are doing a pelvic health, pelvic floor workshop, um, with, uh, Royally fit online. Um, so if you go to her Instagram at miss Royally fit or my Instagram at uh, fun underscore physio and you click on our bios you can sign up for that uh, for that uh, workshop 
um, just to kind of learn about, um, you know, pelvic floor issues, um, postpartum, um, diastasis, recti, that sort of thing. It's just so we can continue to educate uh, the community. Um, and if you guys have any questions, let us know. So have a great Sunday night. Keep that smile on your faces. Stay in contact with your family and friends. Stay safe. And we will see you tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And have a wonderful work day.